So now that the Riverdale hiatus is almost over, it's time to take a look at what's happened so far in season 2B, or like whatever it is they're calling it. Obviously I'm assuming we're all caught up now before the new episodes start, so nothing is off the table. Or if you're just here for the funny funnies, you know, just sit back and enjoy yourself. First off, we have to address the big eye-rolling reveal, and that is of course Agent Adams, the FBI agent. This is one of the most frustrating plot twist trope things like ever invented. Now first off, we're introduced to Agent Adams just kind of out of the blue, like he's been watching Archie and wants to take down Veronica's dad because he's in some kind of like shady business or whatever. So basically, he blackmails Archie into helping him. That agent left. What did he want? Apparently the FBI is assisting in a crackdown on undocumented labor. You stayed a hell away from my dad. Scary, isn't it? How quickly I can make things difficult for you and your father? You said he'd be protected. You gave me a freaking contract. Now initially we see Archie get pulled in a bunch of different directions, like should I help the FBI agent? Should I be loyal to Veronica and Mr. Lodge? Can I protect my dad? That kind of thing. I love you, Archie, but we can't keep dating unless you understand something about my family, about my father. Look, I wanted to protect you from this, but every day you're getting in deeper and deeper and the truth is, Archie, my dad, he's... A mobster. I know. Ronnie, I've seen all those movies. <laughs> what? You know everything about this because you signed a movie, Archie? Doctor, the patient won't make it. Psh, no worries, I got this. I watched like three seasons of House once. We're good. Is this important, by the way? But it turns out, and spoilers if you're not caught up, but like at this point, like whatever, right? So it turns out it's all a lie. The FBI agent was a fake planted by Veronica's mom to test Archie's like loyalty or whatever. This is Lodge. I would never, ever do anything to betray your family, I swear. So you've proven to me these last few weeks. Hiram and I, unbeknownst to our daughter, enlisted one of our closest associates to approach you. Say he was an FBI agent investigating Hiram. Agent Adams isn't real. Are you serious? So you're telling me that all the emotional tension and investment that I put into this story arc was for nothing? This is like if someone asked you to prom and then they show up on prom night and just give you the finger. The old <laughs> just kidding trick that they're pulling here, it just ruins any credibility that the show used to have. Which let's be honest, wasn't a whole lot going into season two, but like whatever, right? It's the TV version of just a prank, bro. If I wanted this kind of thing, I'd just keep watching Pretty Little Liars, okay? A lot of TV shows and movies do things like this to make it seem smarter than it actually is. But really, this kind of like story trick thing is just lazy. More than that though, this means that the show doesn't have to take responsibility for anything that happens going forward. I mean with this twist, I've basically completely checked out emotionally because anything at any time could be a lie or a trick or a dream or whatever. Like I get that this was supposed to show Archie making a choice between Veronica and her family versus his own sense of like justice or whatever and there are several much better directions they could have taken this whole thing. But having the FBI agent turn out to just be some like community theater actor or like whatever, like I'm pretty sure the writers of the show just didn't know how to wrap up the story thread, so they just kind of pulled the old like days of our lives trick of having everything mean nothing. Aha! It was a trick! Bet you didn't see that one coming because there was no hint whatsoever because we actually didn't plan ahead this far and we kind of panned ourselves into a corner and we couldn't quite figure out how to get out of it, so haha, <laughs> gotcha! Blah. The other main sort of story point beat plot thing is the introduction of Betty's brother, Chick. So the story goes that when they were younger, Betty's mom got pregnant and decided to give it up for adoption, unbeknownst to Betty's dad. Now fast forward some years later, and Betty and her mom track him down to try to introduce him back into their lives. It sounds pretty interesting, right? Charles? Charles. My name's Alice Cooper. This is my daughter, Betty. We're... I know who you are. The sisters gave me your address when I turned 18, when they kicked me out. We never really get into too much detail, but we learn that Chick is some kind of like webcam streamer dude or whatever. But like the way they portray it in the show is like it's some kind of like sinister dark profession done in dirty hotel rooms. But like have the writers of the show never heard of Twitch or even like Snapchat? People live stream stuff all the time. This is like the least surprising thing he could be doing in 2018. Something about Chick and his ne'er-do-well profession is so enticing to Betty, especially now that she's getting into her dark alter ego or like whatever, that she wants to try streaming too, which is fine I guess. but. Again, the way the show portrays this is just so weird. Like, just watch this. We'll start with why I webcam. One of the reasons is to make money. The other reason is to escape. To pretend to be someone else. 
It's a way of getting away from the darkness I feel inside me, too. Can you show me how to do that? Scary music. Dark lighting. Fog machine, because, like, you know, why not? Can you show me how to stream online? Uh, sure. I mean, I was just going to play some League of Legends on Twitch. Like, I don't know what all this is for. Besides, if you make the room too dark, no one could see all your gaming swag behind you to prove that you're a real nerd. And then Betty starts streaming. But again, it's like, I mean, the fact that she streams online is really just one of the more believable things that happens in this show. And even the fact that she puts on a wig and dresses all sexy or whatever, like, that's actually pretty accurate, to be frank. Hello. But like, the way they package it here in the show, it's like... Okay, so Riverdale's target demographic is young people, obviously, right? Teens to young adults. But the way the writers write the show, sometimes it feels just like those local news stations when they try to talk about like what teens are doing nowadays, even though they have like no idea what they're talking about at all. Approachably attractive people, giving you the news you already saw on the internet like eight hours ago. It's the local news. Coming up, are your kids spending any time at all on the computer like ever? Well, you thought the Black Hood was bad news. Get ready for internet live streaming. If you want to show Betty going down a dark path towards Lucifer's lollipop, have her start making musicallys. There's no turning back from that. Now on a slight tangent, I'm just gonna call it right now, okay? So Chick is gay. This is pretty obvious at this point. They're hinting at it really strong. And sometime by the end of season two, he's gonna be accepted into the friend group and he and Kevin will start dating. Place your bets now, kids. So things were starting to finally get a little bit interesting in the second half of season two, but like they totally just shot themselves in the foot by having the last several episodes mean nothing. A huge chunk of what's happened so far with Archie, Veronica, and her dad and all that, it just basically wasted all of our time. What's going on with Betty and her brother still has some potential to take us to an interesting place maybe, but like, between you and me, I'm not really holding my breath here, you know what I'm saying? Hey everybody, thanks so much for watching. Uh, just to clarify a couple points here, as I, I watched this video back and I realized maybe I wasn't so clear on a few things. The reason why this Agent Adams thing upset me so much is because it's, I mean, it, it's really common in like the teen drama world. Something important happens and then, haha, just kidding, there was a lie. Like, that kind of thing, it really bothers me because it, it means that there's no sense of permanence to anything. Like, anyone's actions or anything that happens in the story, like, at any time can be taken away. So, what that means is that there's no weight to anything. There's no meaning. Like, like, like any event can be retracted at any moment. So, it's like, why should I care what happens then? Because at any time, you can just take it away from me. The, the other thing with Chick, um, I realize he's not actually streaming on Twitch. I realize he's doing something different. But the point I was trying to make is just, like, you know, in today's world live streaming, doing internet video, like, like me, hello? I mean, it's not like so, so common, like everyone's doing it, but it's relatively common, like it's not really that rare of a thing now to have someone do live streaming or even webcamming, whatever, like it's not that shady, you know, secret of a thing, like a lot of people do it, I feel like. You know, the way they show it in the show, it's like this, like, this the darkest, evilest thing, like, oh man, Betty's really going down the drain, but it's like, I mean, she's doing something that like lots of people do just for fun, and so like, I don't know, the way they're showing it is kind of disingenuous ingenuous to how it actually is, I feel like. But anyway, thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Follow me on Twitter. Tweet at me. I try to respond to everything I get. Send me a message. Tell me what you're thinking. Follow my dog Charlie on Instagram. Charlie meets pumpkin. Check out the Patreon if you're interested. It's just five bucks a month. You get behind the scenes stuff. You get early drawings. You know, it's just to help support the channel. You get early access type of stuff. You know, if you're interested, check it out. Above all, let's have a great day, everyone. I'll see you all next time.